Welcome back everyone, Jose Tony One Crisis here and today we have a new episode of the Mendoza career here on F1 Challenge 99202. We are here for round 4 of the 2000 FIA season here at Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. One of the... if there were a triple crown for F1 it will be composed of this Grand Prix along with the Monaco Grand Prix and perhaps the Italian Grand Prix. Although I would prefer a quadruple crown, including the Belgian Grand Prix. Silverstone is one of the favorite, tr favorite tracks for many drivers. It is a very fast, it is a quite fast track, not very fast compared to say Monza, but it is a very fast track overall in terms of average speed, even if it is not that high in terms of max speed. Now, the timing and the scheduling of this particular round is very interesting. Usually, the British round it is much further in the calendar, and the reason for that is that, as it is right now, this round directly coincides with Britain's wet weather uh, period, which means that during the race there might be the effect, or at least during this weekend, there might be the effect of weather. As we can see in the weather report, at least on Sunday, we don't expect we don't expect to see any rain but during the Sunday we do expect to see a lot more rain maybe it'll rain during the entire race maybe it's just during a period we're not totally sure what we know is that at the very least it will be overcast at some point and it will rain at some point as for the track itself like I said before it is a high speed track in terms of average speed which means it will be a high downforce track so that the drivers can maintain as much speed as possible throughout the bends which will limit their maximum speed but if you want to be fast around here you need a lot of downforce similarly due to the stress put on the tires around most of the corners like well pretty much the entirety of the first sector with Cobbs, the, Maggot, the Maggots, Beckett's Chapel Complex and Stowe we're gonna have a lot of tire wear on this one, which means most of the strategies run by the teams will be either 2-stop or 3-stop. Although, expect some teams to switch it up if the rain does come as it is expected. Now, I'm getting told that the qualifying session is about to get underway, so let's get down there and see how the results turn out. At least Mendoza did not put it that late this time, they've been working on that car plenty, trying to make it softer as I heard. The rear end is a bit higher, the lap opens, the rear end is a bit higher, trying to look for a bit more downforce in certain parts. Good enough around tops, now let's see what he can do around Maggots, Beckett and Chapel. Running over the curves, not what is usually done, okay, he didn't quite manage to get it hooked up around a chapel but it's okay it's pure acceleration now electing to go for the shorter run now let's see how good is he on the first sector that's the fastest he's done just slightly faster than his teammate and bouncing all over over the entry of stone and stone itself very good that he did not get the car around despite the rear bouncing bit conservative entering this corner now let's see what he can do under pure acceleration decent run I think he could have been a bit more aggressive entering Bale, but it will be fine. Now entering the bridge section again, bottoming out over the curbs, it will be fine, I guess. The FIA does not check the, 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 the planks after the qualifying session, very good second sector. Slightly faster than his teammate on it despite being a bit conservative. Now let's see what he can do in the final sector, love field. Getting the power down a bit, a bit of understeer, but he managed to get it under control now. Now power down the main straight, getting the short run, will he be able to still beat his teammate? And he will, despite this sector not being his fastest, he definitely beat his teammate with that. Now, I'm getting told the qualifying session has ended, so now let's see who qualified where and what's at stake for the British Grand Prix. And it is a McLaren front row lockout, as you would expect from this season. Mika Hakkinen once again puts it on pole, followed by his teammate David Coulthard. Michael Schumacher did the best he could, but he only finishes third, nearly a tenth and a half down on his main championship rival. Ruins Barrichello manages to get his car fourth, and then there's a big gap, eight tenths, to the next car in Heinz Harald Frensen, followed by Jacques Villeneuve. That is your top six. 
Down below you have Giancarlo Fisichella of Benetton 7, Jarno Trulli 8, Josh Verstappen 9, good solid work for the arrows man. Then you have Jensen Button, the local man at 10th of Williams. 11 will be the other arrows of Pedro de la Rosa, 12 will be Ralph Schumacher in the other Williams, Alex Mendoza manages to get 13th, 73 thousandths of a second behind Ralph Schumacher. Decent solid job from the young Venezuelan. 14 will be Ricardo Santa in the second VAR, 15 Alexander Wirth with the other Benetton, Mika Salo finishes 16th in the Sauber Petronas, 17 Eddie Irvine in the other Jaguar, 18 will be Pedro Diniz, 19 will be Marc Genet, solid job, just barely, barely manages to be just very, very close to Pedro Diniz despite being on a minority, and more impressive than that, is the fact that he put half a second over number um, over 20th place Nick Heidfeld of Prost and nearly a full second over last place man and teammate Gaston Mazzacane in the same type of car. Awesome job from the Spanish man. And if you need a reminder of what's at stake in this very early round, Mika Hakkinen right now is leading the World Ride Championship with 26 points over Michael Schumacher with 20. Third is David Coulthard with 9 points, 4th is Rubens Barrichello 8 points, Alex Mendoza is 5th with the same amount of points, 5, Jarno Trulli uh, is 6th with 4 points, Jack Villeneuve and Heinz Harald Frenzer are tied for 7th with just 2 points, and Raul Schumacher and Ricardo Sonta are tied for 9th with a single solitary point to their name. As for the World Constructors' Championship, McLaren Mercedes lead the way with 35 points over Ferrari's 28, and then you have a big gap to Jordan with just 6 points, Jaguar with 5, VAR Honda with 3, and Williams BMW with a single solitary point, thanks to Ralph Schumacher. Now it's time to go to the race, let's get down there and see how the 2000 British Grand Prix turns out. All right, this race is ready to get underway. The clutches are ready, everyone is ready. The track is a bit wet, but let's see what everyone can do. The race is on, the clutches have dropped. Mika Hakkinen, very good start from the guy. Now he just needs to, oh no, understeer. He's gonna lose the lead. David Coulthard now takes the lead of the British Grand Prix. Mika Hakkinen drops all the way to six. Doesn't look like that many people had issues into turn one, but Coulthard takes the lead of the British Grand Prix, followed by the Ferraris. I think I see Heinz Harald Frensen back there. I see, who was that? Jack Villeneuve? Yes, yeah, Jack Villeneuve. You can see the spray. It's been raining since early morning, and fortunately, at least for this race, it has stopped. At least enough for the track to dry out, enough to do a, a nice standing start with dry tires. Michael Schumacher tried to take the lead, but he, it, the, the move was not there. Like I was saying, it did stop raining, which means the track started to dry out, but it's still expected that in a few minutes, 10, 20 minutes, we're gonna see more rain. Anyway, the, 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 the order right now is Coulthard, Schumacher, Barrichello, Frensen, Villeneuve, Hakkinen, Schulli, Fisichella, Verstappen, Button, Mendoza, and Ralph Schumacher. Mendoza managed to gain a few places during that race start. His race start itself was not that good, but he's managed to make up for it, gain some places back. Now we're gonna see how this race progresses because remember, and like I said before, there's rain coming. We don't know if it is in 10 minutes or in 20 minutes. It could be in 6 laps, it could be in 10 laps, it could be in 20 laps. We don't know. Teams have to prepare for that and I'm pretty sure their strategies are working real hard to, make, to, to, to think about the best strategy for every single circumstance that can occur. And Mika Hakkinen's not great start continues to not be great as he's still stuck behind Jacques Villeneuve. They make a little contact there, but Mika Hakkinen has been trying for the fast cup for the last couple of laps to get through Villeneuve. He's faster than him, but you know how it is in Formula One. It's very difficult to overtake. He's trying to make a move now. Little contact there has been another mistake from the world champion. And whoa, where's Mendoza going? Mendoza completed a move there on button, but. I guess he got distracted by the whole Mika Hakkinen incident and yeah, he has to let that position go. Probably he got distracted by the whole uh, blockade that formed there and had to give up the position because he got it 
by going on the grass, but now he's gonna try to challenge Button again, try to hold it under, around the outside, don't think that's going to work, but Button swings wide, and Mendoza is through. Mendoza manages to get 10th place from Jensen Button, all because of that mistake from Mika Hakkinen, which punched up the field, Mendoza managed to get a bit closer to Button, and he looks quite a bit, he looks closer now to Verstappen as well in the arrows. So, that, that, that little battle between Hakkinen and Villeneuve might have benefited Mendoza as well. He's trying to hunt down Verstappen now. We're, we're gonna see if he's able to. Also, I saw a lightning a while ago. Maybe it's start, going to start to rain again harder. He carried so much speed into there, broke so late, and it looks like, yeah, he got the position from Verstappen. Verstappen gonna try to take it back, but to no avail. Now Mendoza is up to nine. Solid work, solid start. And conditions have worse really quickly now, it's raining real hard, it might be time to put either intermediates or wet tires. We don't think it's time for the monsoons, we don't think it can rain hard enough in this place for monsoon tires, but teams are gonna have to decide between wet and inters for this situation. The Mendoza and Folk team have really been aggressive when it comes to pit stop strategies. We saw that happen during the Canadian Grand Prix last year. Also with the European Grand Prix last year, they are really high on being on the right tire at the right time and it looks like they will be, at least the Jaguar team will be the first to bring someone in and that someone will be Mendoza as we heard through the radio. As far as I understand it, strategy A, and as you can see there you go, the strategy A is the two-stop strategy they were on, strategy B is the three-stop strategy they will now be switching to. And you can see a lot of the teams ready, pretty much all of the teams except for Jaguar, ready in the pits. Um, considering the current order, I'm pretty sure the leading drivers are going to get priority, so in this case, uh, David Coulthard, Michael Schumacher are gonna get first uh, first priority here. Same with drivers like, oh, careful, Michael. Drivers like Villeneuve or Frensen, Marc Genet. All those drivers that are ahead of their teammates, they're gonna get priority. Maybe not the best use of resources for teams like McLaren. Maybe they should bring Mika Hagenen in. But remember, uh, McLaren has a very strict policy of giving number one equal status to the driver so it will make sense that they bring their leading driver right now David Goulhart first in now Michael Schumacher into his box who will win this pit stop battle let's see just just imagine the pit crew there F1 challenge replay moment and it looks like it will be McLaren yep McLaren wins and David Goulhart will remain in the relative lead of this champ uh, of this race virtual lead right now Rubens Barrichello is leading but that's because he has not pitched just yet. They have dropped back some. Some drivers are still out there. Your De La Rosas, your Words, your Alasis, I'm pretty sure. Unlucky for them as they were behind their teammates and they cannot double stack. So for now, they'll have to do what we have. They will have to come in in a few laps. But for now, David Coulthard in the virtual lead, Rubens Barrichello. In the actual lead of the race, they will have to bid in, they will have to give up their position. Here's Alex Mendoza, who right now is P16 and try to, trying to hunt down Gaston Mazzacane for, for P15. They should be a cakewalk because Mendoza is on the wet tires, Mazzacane is on the dries, and like I said, really no battle there. Up ahead is Jacques Villeneuve. The young Venezuelan is on the proper tire, and as we heard, he is on a three stop. Most of the teams. Uh, especially considering like cool horse and Michael Schumacher's relatively long stop they should be on two stops so maybe just maybe this little different strategy that the Jaguar team is trying can work
Mendoza is now the only one struggling out there with passing people that's slower than him. Here's Kulhar and Michael Schumacher effectively, effectively passing back markers. They are on the lead lap. They are just on the ground. Here's Kulhar trying to pass De La Rosa. Hagen. Kulhar has been. Michael Schumacher with no issue passes him. And Michael Schumacher now takes the virtual lead of this race. All because Kulhar had issues passing Pedro de la Rosa and remember de la Rosa was on the lead lap so he was not forced to get out of the way that little mistake and now Michael Schumacher to the lead of this race Mendoza was well behind that battle so he should not be able to interfere it interfere in it he is P15 well now P14 thanks to the fact he's about to overtake people that's in the pits and he's trying to hunt down Jacques Villeneuve now. As oh, Villeneuve goes wide, goes into the grass. I think that's it. That's it. That's it for that fight. Mendoza up to P13. Now he's trying to hunt down Pedro Diniz, who's struggling a bit as well. I'm pretty sure he's still on dry tires. So he's... Yeah, it's, it's very difficult. Yeah, he's still trying though. Diniz is defending very well despite being on the, on the ground tire. But look at that spray. It's very hard to see. That's it. Mendoza goes through P12 now for the Venezuelan. Now, who's next? I need to see who's next. He goes on the grass, keeps it under control, however. I, I, I gotta see who's next. He's, he's been showing some solid pace for these opening laps. I think I see a Jordan there. It's a Jordan, also a Prost. I'm pretty sure that's John Alesi up front. Yeah, it is John Alesi. And up ahead as well is Heinz Harald Frensen, and I think that's Giancarlo Fisichella up ahead. Was it Fisichella or was it uh, Alexander? I think that's Alexander Words, who still needs a bit, and it's holding everyone up. Yeah, it's, it's Alexander Words. And Alessi as well, he also needs to bit, and he's through. Mendoza gains another position. Words, he has no need to overtake, but he's gonna go for it anyway. As I said, Words needs to pit. So this overtake doesn't really gain him anything. I think he's P11 now or P10. We should get a clearer picture after they cross the start finish line and and go ahead of get ahead of cops, get ahead of anyone that's coming out of pit. That's P5 for the Jaguar man. Oh, I see Barry Keller just ahead, and now he's trying to hunt down Frensen. And remember, he's on a on, on a three-stop strategy, which means he will be faster than those around him that are on heavy fuel load and a two-stop. Frensen goes wide. Uh, his heart of Frensen goes very wide. P4 now. The very first man to pit, showing some solid pace on the wet. Just, just let's see what the young man can do. It feels like Ferrari have one of the best set of cars for these kind of conditions in the wet, generating so much downforce. And yet the Jaguar of Mendoza, he's just keeping up with Barrichello. Barrichello really closely things sense to cool her really quickly. But Mendoza has not left Barrichello's rear, despite Barrichello being in a much better car. And now he's attacking him inside of Lofield. Can he hold the inside? Can Barrichello hold the outside? Barrichello cannot hold the outside. Mendoza moves up, up to P3 which is amazing heights for the Jaguar team and now Barrichello is going to try to retake the lead uh, retake P3 into Cops, no he thinks better of it Mendoza into P3 now hunting down Coulthard for P2 I don't know about you but this seems oddly familiar Mendoza once again right behind David Coulthard in this case and as far as we've seen, the, whoa, Mendoza attacking really early. As far as we've seen, the, 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 the McLaren is not that good in the wet compared to the Ferrari. And Mendoza is proving that. Mendoza uh, he got the move done. Even before Lofield, that move was already done. Mendoza up to second place. Now, can Coulthard attack once again into Cops? Can he retake second place? That, that gap looks really big. I don't think he can do it. No, he thinks better of it, he will not attack. Mendoza up to second place. Now, can he actually hunt down Michael Schumacher? Is it possible?
And just for stopping here, one of the more, let's say, adequate wet weather drivers trying to hunt down Ralph Schumacher here, that despite the arrows not being that good in terms of downforce, it is more of a low drag car, which will so show very well in, in some of the late race. Oh no, 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 no. He hits the wall that will be just stopping out of the race. I think he lost the rear brakes coming into that corner. Maybe it was the front side, not sure, but I'm sure he lost the brakes. I'm sure he's out of this race. And as a confirmation of what we already suspected and pretty much knew at this point, um, Alex Mendoza is being called into the pits and that's very, very, very early, even earlier than some other drivers, which befits uh, his style, their style, I suppose. They're being called in. As we guess, he is on a three-stop strategy. I doubt he's gonna make a set of wet tires last 34 laps and like they said before Jaguar and uh, his engineer Folk does not think those tires will last as long as a half race so they are doing their best to avoid having him on long stints on the same set of wet weather tires so they're gonna bring him in early put him on a fresh set they guess that fresh set is gonna be way faster than other drivers on worn sets of wet, which in theory should be correct. And considering his pace earlier in this stint, he should have not that much of an issue recovering second place, at least if his pit, if his pit stop is good. So as a rundown of the current race order, we have Schumacher, Ferrari, Coulthard, McLaren, Barrichello, Ferrari, Frentzen, Jordan, Mendoza, Jaguar, Villeneuve, BAR, that's your top 6 Fisichella, Benetton Hakkinen, McLaren Trulli, Jordan and Schumacher, Williams as your top 10 I think I saw Frenzen on the side of the road? Yeah, it's on the side of the road I think he's DNF and I think that is a suspension issue Oh, there's Villeneuve and the rest of them That's a suspension issue that will be uh, Frenzen out of this race and Mendoza making those soft tires work really, really well. He's already caught up to Barrichello and Coulthard. He had a, a pretty decent gap before pitting, but he's cut down the uh, the pit stop ga the, the gap it formed at his pit stop, and now he's right behind Rubens Barrichello once again, trying to find a way past him. And considering he has fresher tires, even if Barrichello has a better car, he should have absolutely no issue getting through into bail, Ooh, very late breaking, very aggressive move into bail, now into club, no Barrichello cannot do anything, aggressive entry into bail, not sure he completely planned all of that, but at the very least he got the move done, past Barrichello he goes. Let's just say that Jensen Button has not had the greatest of debuts at his home race, been screwed over in strategy uh, oh that's gonna make it that much worse being screwed over by strategy had a brake issue on his car that's gonna be him out of this race just just a debut to forget I I'd say for the for the young British British driver as for the Jaguar teams is other than Williams that is it has been a very very good day indeed as McLaren is second right now in the race and there's a third uh, in third place, there's another British team in the form of Jaguar, although as you know, Jaguar is a division of Ford, so you could say it is an American third place, but I like to say it is a, uh, an European, a British third place, because Jaguar is a British brand. And right now Mendoza is trying to hunt down Coulthard, he has the better tire, so he should have no issue over it. Yeah, there he goes, there he goes, Coulthard with another near, near house pin, uh, what what more I have to say? It is very very good to have fresh wet tires at the proper time. But not only that, Mendoza is doing an amazing job. The only one that's doing a better job right now is Michael Schumacher, and the only way I can prove that is the fact that he has not been shown in quite a while. And speaking of the man himself, here he is leading this race with a very 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 comfortable margin to the point that right now Ferrari has called him in for a stop 
and do not lose the lead to Mendoza simply because the gap is so big. It is two pit stop gaps, he could pit twice, he could have had some sort of pit stop issue, he will still have the lead. And if we are hearing things correctly, he is also on a three stop strategy, so this is not his final stop. Considering the fact he will be on fresh rubber uh, more than other people, he will pull a significant lead over every, everyone in this race. For all of Pro's hopes at the beginning of the year, this particular race is proving that they are not as good as they would have liked. Their lead driver, Jan Lacy, is struggling, struggling in the wet, which is he, one of his strengths. And this is going to make it even worse. He's going to have a brake issue. He's going to be out of the race. At the very least, they still have one car in the fight in the form of Nick Heidfeld. But I'm pretty sure Lacy is not going to be happy with this one. So I hear there's a bit of strategy out here at play today. It looks like... Uh, Ferrari are not pleased with the way Barrichello has been stuck behind Coulthard all of this time and they're trying to get him through using strategy. They will bring him in early. They've seen what uh, the results of the three-stop strategy with his teammate Michael Schumacher, with Alex Mendoza, with uh, Nick Heidfeld and Marginet being in very good position. There he goes into the pit very, very early indeed. Now we're going to see what, what comes out of it. Of course, there's Mendoza well ahead of this, but I'm pretty sure he'd like to respond to this pit stop because, as we've seen, pitting, uh, pitting for fresh tires really increases your pace. I'm pretty sure they want to respond to that as soon as possible. A bit of a strategical oddity here, so Mendoza, after the rain began and they, everyone made his initial stop for wet tires, Mendoza, Mendoza has been on the pits twice, same with Michael Schumacher, Nick Heifel, Marginet, those drivers on three stops. The McLarens and most of the other drivers on two stops, they've only been on the pits either once or none at all. In the case of the McLarens, they have not pitted at all. That pace difference is really showing with Hakkinen trapped in the lower in the in the middle of the in the table and Coulthard being passed by Mendoza although he's trying to fight back into Bale but it's very hard to defend yourself if you are on the outside of Bale Mendoza goes into second yet again and McLaren's strategy definitely has not worked out at all today for the car's performance I'm really impressed with Nick Heidfeld's work in this race, he's P14 right now doing his best to pass Pedro de Rosa, just remember how that went for David Coulthard. And despite the pros being not that great of a car, he's really up there with de la Rosa, solid work so far I though I think, trying to help spin de la Rosa is not what I call solid, there goes Mendoza. Heidfeld got the inside line of De La Rosa, De La Rosa got distracted, not sure I called that move really clean, De La Rosa trying to fight, black, uh, fight back, not exactly a clean move, but I mean at least he got the job done, Heidfeld goes up to 13 now, not bad. Hagenin's race has not been what anyone expected it will be. He's still down low and right now he's only fighting, oh careful now, he's only fighting Rubens Barrichello because Barrichello pit and now he's stuck behind them, which really highlights one of these tracks issues, it's very very hard to find an overtaking spot. A few of the drivers have gotten around that issue but others like uh, Barrichello Victor here still can't find a consistent way to overtake despite the significant tire advantage that Barrichello absolutely has over hacking and remember. Hakkinen has not beat once after the conditions got wet. Despite that, he's holding up Barrichello with no issue at all. I think back there, I think back there is Michael Schumacher. Yeah, that was Michael Schumacher, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you, it's very hard to mistake that red car. But I saw a green car there. I'm not sure if that's actually Mendoza or careful Rubens. 
Not sure if that was actually Mendoza or Eddie Irvine. The camera is not close enough to be able to see. I'm pretty sure that's Irvine. But yeah, not positive. Hakkinen has just held a barricade for the entirety of this lap. I'm pretty, pretty damn impressed despite the deficit in terms of tire. Oh, he has completely stonewalled the Ferrari driver. He's gonna have to let uh, his championship rival through, but at the very least, he managed to hold a Ferrari. Williams definitely has not covered themselves in glory, although they have a justification for that. This is Ralph Schumacher, he has reported some engine issues for the last couple of laps. The BMW engine at the back of the of the car has... It lo looks like it's giving up. They have been trying to save the engine for the last couple of laps, but I'm not sure that's gonna be enough. Still 10 laps to go and... yeah. There goes the engine. You can see it's smoking, the BMW has completely given up on the German driver, that will be Ralf Schumacher out of the race, and Williams out of their home race. Disappointing end for the team. Well, 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 what do we have here? We It looks like we have a roll reverse, reversal from the initial laps. Here's Rubens Barrichello, right now he's being chased down by, over here you can see David Coulthard, you remember how well, how good that went for Barrichello in the first couple of laps. Now we're gonna have Coulthard trying the same and we're gonna see if the extra speed the McLaren has over the Ferrari makes any difference. I really gotta give credit right now to Mark Genet. He is in 10th place, 40 seconds ahead of Works car of Eddie Irvine in the Jaguar, remember Minardi are using customer Ford engines while Jaguar uses work, uh, works Ford engines, 10th place by the Spaniard, while over here in the pros Nick Heifel, he's 13, it's been a quite a solid day for who we expected to be the back markers, but they are in the top half of the 10s, above some other good teams like your Benetton's, your BAR, so Solid work from these two young men. It has been an utterly dominant race by Marcus Schumacher in the lead as soon as he took the lead. No one saw him ever again other than the times he was going to stop. It is a typically awesome drive by what many consider the best driver on the grid right now. A completely spotless drive in the rain. Michael Schumacher is going to win the 2000 British Grand Prix solid work and with that he will retake the lead of the World Drivers Championship and basically the lead of the World Constructors Championship on his own. Here is the second man place in this race. I think he's like 40 seconds behind but you know what? Considering the team he's on, the, circumstan the circumstances they're on, I'm pretty sure he's happy. Here is Alex Mendoza driving the Jaguar into second place. He has been pretty solid given the circumstances, beating pretty much every other team, your Hakkinen's, your Coulthard's, your Barry Kellos, your Frensen's, your Jordan's, McLaren's, even a Ferrari. It has been an awesome drive from the Venezuelan in the wet, nearly as solid as that put down by Michael Schumacher, and it's one that his team really really will appreciate that six points for him six points for the team alex mendoza is gonna finish second in the british grand prix the team's home race i'm pretty sure they are really really happy with that result and for third place it would be rubens barrichello david could have tried everything but he could not close that gap enough third place for rubens barrichello two ferraris in the podium and the mclarens looking from afar Coulthard will be fourth and Hakkinen down in eight.
an absolutely dominant drive that is worthy of being mentioned as one of his best, Michael Schumacher wins a very wet British Grand Prix a full minute ahead of the rest of the field. Alex Mendoza finishes second on a Jaguar. Thanks to the wet weather and excellent strategy, he managed to finish ahead of everyone else, be it Ferrari, McLaren, Benetton, BAR, Jordan, whatever, finish ahead of them. Rubens Barrichello completes a Ferrari 1-3 in the podium, a full 15 seconds behind Alex Mendoza. Fourth will be David Goulhart who did his best but didn't quite manage to catch Rubens Barrichello in the end. Giancarlo Fisichella is fifth a lap down along with Jack Villeneuve who is sixth also a lap down. Both of them did their best managing to finish ahead of the Jordan of Jarno Trulli. Eighth will be Mika Hakkinen, the McLaren, probably the biggest disappointment of this race considering he was the pole man, just couldn't get anything going after that initial mistake and since he was behind David Coulthard he did not get prioritized in terms of the pit stops. Mika Salo will finish ninth and another of the stories of the race, even though it was quite subtle, Marc Genet in the minority finishes 10th, also a lap down ahead of Eddie Irvine in one of the Jaguars, remember. And like I said in the transmission, Marc Genet and Minardi are using customer Ford engines, so they basically beat Ford's works team, even though one of the Jaguars was in the podium. They are gonna take this as a victory. 12th is Pedro de la Rosa, 13th, another interesting story of this race, the Prost of Marc Genet, solid work by the young German. Ricardo Santa will be 14, Alex Wurz will be 15, Pedro Diniz 16 in the Sauber, and the last of the qualified runners, Mars, uh, Gaston Mazzacane in the Minardi. 30 lap down. That race had a very noticeable effect in the World Drivers' Championship, with Mika Hakkinen scoring 0 points and Michael Schumacher scoring 10. Michael Schumacher now takes the lead of the World Drivers' Championship by 4 points over rival Mika Hakkinen. David Kulhar is now third, tied with Rubens Barrichello, both of them at 12 points. Alex Mendoza is now with 11 points, he's still in fifth. Jarno Trulli is sixth with four points. Jacques Villeneuve is now third ahead of Giancarlo Fisichella in eighth, who has just two points and is tied with Heinz Harald Frentzen. Tenth will be a tie between Williams's Raul Schumacher and BAR's Ricardo Sonta. That race also altered the World Constructor standings, that means Ferrari will now take the lead of the Constructor standings with McLaren being second, Ferrari with 42 points, McLaren with 38, 4 point gap, it is definitely a close gap, we could see it close very quickly in the following races. Jaguar Cosworth is now 11 points and in 3rd place ahead of Jordan Mugen Honda just 6 points, VAR Honda trying to chase him down just 4 points, 2 points behind. As well, two points behind as well is Benetton, six with just two points. Williams BMW, the last of the point scorers, with a single solitary point to their name. And that will be it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you really like the brand new editing style. It's a style that I really wanted to use for some time, that of using Google Earth as animation. It is not an animation software, but you know what? I'm gonna run with it for some time. Hope you really liked it. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already and you really like the content that I've been uploading. There are, there are a few other series that I have planned, uh, not just related to F1 Challenge, but also to a few PS1 games. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be really awesome. And if you really like the stuff that I'm doing, really want to support me, there's a coffee link down there. Hit if you so desire. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next episode of the Mendoza Career, where we will be going to Spain for the Spanish Grand Prix. See you there.